perfectly good power wheels goes under the knife. First cut, first piece taken off. It's this back piece here so we can get as much seat room as possible. We'll probably remove more later, but that's just, just to get a rough idea of what kind of, whoa, what kind of room we're gonna have in this thing. Definitely more than the Jeep, that's for sure. Yeah, even with the extension. <laughs> yeah, even, yeah. <clears throat> and the front clip, had way more support than the Mustang, which is awesome because we kind of had to screw in a bunch of weird stuff to kind of get that to stay on. So this yeah. is gonna be a lot easier in that way. This plastic is so different. I'm not sure if it's thinner or a different kind or what, but it just cuts like butter. <laughs> which is so handy for this kind of thing. Oh yeah. So there is so much room in this hood compared to anything we've worked with so far. Yeah, it's it's fantastic. It's awesome. This is the biggest engine we've used and we still have the most space. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if, how many of you guys remember how much time I spent cutting plastic out of the Jeep just to get the engine to sort of fit in it. Mm -hmm. This one, like, I spent 10 minutes cutting plastic and it's just, there's so much room already. Yeah. It's fantastic, look at that. Which is good because we need to figure out how to fit suspension around that thing. Yeah. That's gonna be tough. Yep. So Go Power Sports uh, hooked us up again. We've got a big old box of parts for Bumblebee, but it's exciting because now we can actually get started on building it and seeing how it's gonna come together. Oh, this is an exciting box. Wow. Really exciting box. And we'll also, have... there's a little box here with some bearing sets for the axle. Very important. Going with an inch and a quarter axle the first time this time. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> parts list will be on our site, and the link to the parts will be in the description. Oh, they mounted the wheels for us. Are you serious? What homies. Look at that. Yes. That's what you want. That's 10 and a yeah. half by four and a half. I like those. They're like, I like having them be a little bit narrower, but they're still, they're not like super skinny flimsy ones like the Mustang used to have, but they're a little narrower. It'll be easier to steer. And they're all on a six inch wheel. We went with black, which was a good choice. It's a really good choice. This looks like a rear hub. Man, that's light. It's awesome. It's nice and light and strong. <laughs> so thanks to Go Power Sports, we got all the parts we need to get started. Now we just need a place to work on this thing. Yeah, we've been needing a welding table for a long time. I built the Jeep on a really terrible wooden table that's been sitting around forever. It kept lighting on fire. <laughs> yep, and it's not very flat. So we're gonna go out to the scrap pile and come up with some materials to make a small table to build this on. Do you have a plan? No, it's evolving. <laughs> Stand for the welder itself. 
and you can still access the side for the wire and stuff. And then right now I just have the bottle laying underneath it. Uh, I'll come up with something better later because I don't like these gauges sticking out. They could get kicked off and they'd be bad. So, um, but I want to get to work on bumblebee. So that'll work for now. And then I threw myself a couple of little hoops here for the stinger so that I don't keep, I constantly like set it here and then it goes So we got that. First step this time is just to build the kind of the outline of the frame that holds the body up and then we'll start adding on to that. frame here. Um, I worked on it a bit yesterday. I got both the frame, the main top tubes done. They've got a lot of different bends going on. Um, and then I got this front piece that supports the front clip. Um, it's all nice and snug in there. There's no screws holding it in there and you can take this upside down and shake it around and the frame stays in it. So that's kind of cool. Now I need to make a piece in, that connects the back. Um, and I need to cut some off of these because right now they're under the taillights or on top of them, whichever way you want to look at it, which means that it can't really come out. So, well, it could, but it'd be difficult. So I need to make a bar that goes like up here around the back down to support that. And then I'll flip it over and start working on some engine mounts. I can't believe it took me this long to build a welding table, but now that I have it, I love it. Yesterday I mounted up the tubing notcher. It's removable in case I need the space. Just a little simple little bracket there. So now I can have the notcher and the bender on the bench. And right now I'm mounting up the tubing roller. So I don't know if we've really showed this in anything yet, have we? Nope. Anyway, it's just a cheap Harbor Freight roller, but it works. Um, there'll be bends in here where I want a smooth arc instead of just a specific bend. So I'm mounting this up so I can make those. for the frame. I don't know why I'm making it so fancy because it'll never be visible when the car is done, but I like the chassis to look good. Hmm, actually, that looks real nice right there. up a motor mount which at the moment I'm actually going to tack to the table so I can mount the engine and hold it in one place and then I can build the uh, frame around it and then I might even hopefully be able to use the same motor mount bracket uh, and just weld the frame to it and then cut it off the table it's the idea <laughs> fabbed up and tacked onto the table, bolted onto the engine. So the engine is 
perfectly flat with the table this way, and perfectly flat with it this way, and perfectly square to the table as well. So now I can just measure, I can use the squareness of the table as a measuring point, and I can set the body back on top, and then I can just kind of build the frame around it. And ideally, I can weld the frame to these motor mounts where they're at, and then later on, I can cut them off of the table and, and modify them. It's gonna be a lot straighter and squarer than anything else we've built so far. <laughs> I was expecting to have to do a lot of tube work and stuff before I could mount anything to the part of the frame that I made inside the body, but because that engine mounts in a convenient location, I just made these two tabs, and now the uh, frame is mounted. So I can start building stuff and this will all stay where it's at. This sticker on the front makes me happy. made by Fuji Heavy Industries. I've been a Subaru fan for many, many, many years. I don't own one anymore, but Fuji Heavy Industries is Subaru. So I've got the engine tacked to the bench and to the frame. Now it's time to start building more of the structural part of the frame. I'm gonna run it along here, down the center line, two tubes, just a couple inches apart. They'll go to the front motor mount, and then I'll make another motor mount back here, on the back of the engine. And then these runners will also probably be the mount point for the front suspension. And uh, because they're going to go all the way back to the radiator here, more or less, they're also going to be the coolant pipes. So on the Jeep, we just used a bunch of hose to run coolant from the front of the engine to the back where the radiator was. This time, I'm going to make two of the frame rails be contiguous from front to back and uh, make it so that I can put a hose on the ends of them and use them as coolant pipes, which also gives it extra cooling capacity because of running through all that steel, it'll help cool it down a tiny bit. So it's going to be awesome. And we won't be able to crack them and make them right. leak like exactly. we always do on the Jeep. Right. <laughs> Every time we jump it, they get pinched or whatever. This little clampy dealy uh, in an attempt to make bends more accurate. So what it does is just clamps onto any size of tubing and then you can stick a level on it uh, either hops sideways or I mean vertically either vertically or horizontally and then that way when you put your piece back into the bender you can get it the exact same rotation um, and I'm going to get a little digital level angle finder thing so that you can just twist it and see how many degrees you're doing. When, you're, when your bends are all in a line, it's not really that much of an issue because you can just kind of look down it and make sure it's all lined up. But when you're doing bends that are like 45 degrees off or 90 degrees off from the original, the first bend axis, then that's where that really comes in handy because you can know exactly what the original axis was. So I got these frame rails looking nice and pretty here. There's five bends in each rail. Um, they'll weld to the front motor mounts, which are currently still welded to the uh, table. So I can just weld them, tack them onto these mounts and then later cut them off so that they're only attached to the frame. And then I'll make another motor mount here, one on either side. So we'll actually be using like almost all of the mount points on the engine that were originally mount points. I think the only one we won't use is this one up here. And again, these are the these frame tubes are also the coolant pipes to get water to and from the radiator. So that's why I have them split. I mean, one of the reasons why they bend out here and then back is so that they're closer to the input and output for the radiator. And then that way we'll only need short little chunks of rubber hose instead of like <laughs> 12 feet of it to get to the back.
I've got this part here tied in with the upper frame that's all up inside here, this part, and then got this cross piece here for strength and for seat mounting. So the seat goes, it fits in here like it was made for it. All I need is a couple of little tiny tabs that just go whoop, straight to that. Point them out again? Right here. And a little tab that just goes on this bolt and then welds to that bar. Perfect. So now that I've got the seat mounted and you know a rough outline of a frame, uh, it's time to start thinking about drivetrain and suspension and how that all fits together. So obviously we need a jack shaft um, to get power to the rear so that it's not running through your leg. <laughs> so, and the jack shaft should be as close as possible to the pivot point for the rear suspension arm which this suspension is not going to be four length like the Jeep. It's not going to have any flex. It's just going to go straight up and down like the rear end of an ATV. Um, and so I was starting to think about that and where to put the jack shaft and all that. And I came up with what I think is a really cool idea, which is to make the jack shaft go all the way across. Obviously it'll be down here. The drive sprocket can be inside the body here, just outside the bearing, which is super strong. And that'll send power to the rear axle. And then my idea here that I'm excited about is to use that same axle as the suspension pivot. So get another set of these same bearings and have them be right next to the one that's welded to the frame right here. And then this one be welded to the suspension arm. And so the suspension pivot would be this bearing, which is obviously a nice sturdy suspension pivot on that inch and a quarter axle and then what it also does is it means that the suspension pivot point is exactly the same as the sprocket drive point so when the suspension travels there'll be zero te chain tension change the shocks that we're going to use for this build are going to be kind of similar to these they're going to be mountain bike shocks off of amazon um, but they're going to be air shocks which you can change the spring rate by adding or removing air pressure and that's how we're going to uh, hopefully get our transforming element where we can raise it up and down by changing air pressure. We might even be able to do it on board. Depends on how they work out. So we'll be to. able to pump it up, get the ride height higher. Exactly. For these put, bad oh, right. boys. Yeah. <laughs> Forgot about that part. <laughs> that's, the, that's the whole reason for making it go up and down is to fit larger off-roadier tires. So how many inches of adjustable ride height is the goal here? Well, the shocks that we're getting have about two inches of travel, which isn't bad. And inevitably we'll get more travel out of them than that. We might be able to double it and get around four inches of travel. That would be ideal. Mm -hmm. um, I'd probably be perfect for that tire. I think so. And it, but it also just depends on how stiff those shocks are, like what their minimum stiffness is and what their maximum stiffness is. So we uh, cleaned off all the greasy fingerprints just to see how beautiful this thing's gonna look when we're done, and it's pretty exciting. <laughs> <laughs> pretty dang. And we also have other exciting news. Now you can get your very own grind hard koozie. And, coolest thing of all, they're magnetic. Holds a full beverage to anything metal. Your uh, tubing bender, your tubing notcher, welding bench, your uh, <laughs> 1962 France Spitfire, you know, <laughs> anything that's made out of metal. And we got pink and we got black. Yep. The link's gonna be in the description, so go check them out. You, and we will get back to this next week.